Something new and a little different here for you today. Everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Vicious RV down here at Winnebago getting uh, my first full deep dive into their new Front Kitchen Access Series. This is one of uh, several of their new uh, Stick and Tin Series floor plans coming out. And the one we're looking at is actually prototype number one. I actually stumbled into it months ago and they wouldn't let me put the camera on it when now i can today what's different i don't know but we can uh go through it here for you today and i and i do want to mention this is the very first prototype there are multiple different things uh that will change before it actually goes into production for instance the carpet that you see in the slide of this video gone they're using a, uh, a linoleum type slide flooring now that matches the main floor. So it makes the whole thing look and feel better. It's not gonna have the, uh, the, the pull down string fed pleated shades. It'll have blackout roller shades and a bunch of other little details like that that this very first prototype kind of proof of concept does not have. Uh, it'll also have things like uh, prep and readiness for side and rear view camera mounts, which is pretty cool. And a bunch of other little details. But this floor plan is taken straight out of the mini lineup and brought down into a far more accessible price point. And they put a little different spin on the conventional front kitchen by uh, placing some campsite windows into it. And that's been a problem plaguing a lot of front kitchen RVs. They have almost no campsite window coverage. And when you're sitting down at the sofa in this one between the kitchen, the entry door, and the dining window, you've actually got a pretty good shot at the campsite of your RV, which is cool. The TV's mounted up a little bit high, but I think some clever use of a swing arm TV bracket could probably overcome that although they're not doing it here from the factory what they are doing though uh like an enclosed heated belly a massive front storage locker that you could shove aunt edna into if she happens to croak on the family vacation major power awning uh the um what do i want to say taller ceiling the solar package a bunch of cool things you don't usually find standard on a stick and tin camper they're doing stuff a little different just the way winnebago tends to make things happen and when I'm not sure exactly where to begin on a new model, I kind of default to, like, where am I going to sit down the most? What's it going to look like when I actually own this thing? And this is the view from the sofa over here. Now, today we're looking at uh, a trifold sleeper sofa, but the standard on this is actually a, uh, a, a theater seat. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a larger, like, three-place uh, theater seat that is also cuddle compliant. It has a central armrest that can uh, fold and get out of the way. So if you're looking for a little bit of cuddle compliance, you have it. Or if you're looking for a little bit of that, um, you know, print style population control. <laughs> when you, uh, anybody who gets that reference right now, you're laughing. I know you're laughing. Anyway, so you have your choice. Uh, you know, you can get theater seat with the various functions as discussed or the trifold sleeper. Now remember, we're looking at one built to 23 specs as a prototype. The carpet will not be there. The uh, the flooring that you're looking at, basically that same kind of flooring look and material will, per will persist all the way through the slide. Now they're doing a couple interesting things here. Uh, they are a little bit taller inside, industry standard being six and a half foot tall, especially in stick and tins, very, very common. Well, these are six foot eight which is an interesting kind of size. A lot of brands are either six and a half or six nine, and they went six eight, linear all the way across on the inside. But overall, it just gives it that little bit bigger look and feel. And again, one of the really key kind of signature calling card aspects of this floor plan is the fact that you have some actual decent campsite window coverage in the living area that a lot of front kitchens simply do not provide. However, one of the things that when they were devising this floor plan, you know, the curvature of the, the front end of these access uh, travel trailers is different from what you find on most RVs. And it, it, it was really kind of giving them fits in terms of like, what do they do with the cabinetry in the front kitchen? So that's why they actually squared off the wall and created that gigantic front storage locker, basically. Uh, was so that they could actually provide a decent kitchen. Now that means no front windshield. But that also means vastly better front cabinet space than you typically find out of a lot of front kitchens. So everything is a push and a pull. It's just a matter of it's the one that works for you. Now, the actual 2024 production models will have the privacy shade integrated in the entry door right from the factory level. And with this being stick built, they don't have to like try to get cute and hide outlets under overhead cabinets. 
they can put power outlets right down at the countertop level, right where they belong. And there's actually another set kind of hidden behind this uh, little utensil uh, organizer type thing over here. By the way, um, do you know why there's the hole in the little spaghetti spoon over here? That is allegedly so that you can properly measure one serving of pasta for, per person. And anybody who tells you that's one serving of pasta... Uh, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. There's other people that will serve you more pasta. I mean, go to Olive Garden. The microwave cook right there, the Magic Chef 9000 at Olive Garden. Wow, chef's kiss. Microwave digital chef's kiss. Good stuff. Um, anyway, in case you weren't aware, yeah, the microwave's the number one cook at uh, the Olive Garden. <laughs> Uh, you may have noticed, though, no propane oven. That is not something you'll find in these. That's not something you'll be able to option into these. Um, they do standardize a uh, convection air frying style kind of uh, microwave oven. And, um, you know, if they're going to have extra space on either side of their sofa, I like how they're including those side stands with the power outlets in them. That's a really cool find. I would say that would be properly sized if you wanted to put like a U dinette in there. But considering this floor plan already has a dinette over here on the camp side of the RV, I don't know uh, why you would want, is, is there anybody who would want a double dinette model in this? Like I'm the type of person, I tend to gravitate a little more toward a double dinofa myself, but not a double dinette. To my knowledge, they're not yet offering any sort of table and chairs or anything here because one of the things is you might notice how there's a storage door under one side of the dinette, but not the other. That's because that's where you have a heat run. Now, there is storage under that dinette if you lift the top up. I kind of wish that was a shoe garage right there, right by the door, though, so I wouldn't have to take the whole dinette apart to get to it. That would kind of make sense to me, but that's just, you know, my nerdy two cents. I'd be kind of curious to know what you folks think about that. Now, this is interesting because if you notice here, the TV pivots... But I don't know that it really needs to in this floor plan. Instead of mounting that same bracket to swing horizontally, what if they mounted that bracket so the TV could swing down vertically and provide a little bit less of a neck wrecker entertainment system? Because it's straight across from the sofa, but it is mounted fairly high. Now, this is the thing. If you really look through all this cabinetry that we're seeing here in the kitchen, this is a stick and tin camper. But the interior reads to me like a laminated RV. It doesn't look, it doesn't feel like a stick and tin camper inside this. When you look at things like the styling of the cabinetry, it's got a nice, clean, kind of fresh look, fresh lines about it. And especially the models where once that carpet is gone, it drastically churches up the interior of these RVs and it makes the RV look and feel uh, a lot nicer right away. Oh, look, we have a house fly up here. Evidently, one of those comes included at no additional charge. Uh, with each Winnebago access. So that's good news. <laughs> and uh, as we work our way back to the bathroom, you got sliding pocket uh, privacy doors for not technically pocket doors because they don't hide in the wall, but sliding doors. Um, I'd be kind of curious. So far, understanding that the RV's not done in the version that we're seeing here today, what do you think of this thing? Let me know. Porcelain foot flush stools, a nice find on a stick and tin camper with just fantastic hip, shoulder, elbow room, all kinds of stuff like that. Good counter space in here as well. Now, part of that counter space, obviously, right behind the toilet. But when you're standing at the sink, the counter space is readily available. And I am personally a fan when these manufacturers put a mirror on the wall with a cabinet beside it, rather than having a bulky mirror stick out right at my face that I hit my head on when I bend over to spit out toothpaste. You know, little details like that, like the uh, the towel bar that you have right there. I like that. Now, I was a little surprised with this being six foot eight inside, almost six nine. When I stand in most six foot nine showers, my head doesn't have to be in the skylight. They must have some pretty extreme plumbing going on underneath this big, like rectangular shower, because I really, you know, the standing it, when I stand in the shower, I'm a little bit over six foot. It felt like I was back in a six and a half foot tall camper, even though this is two inches bigger inside. So, um, I don't know. That was just something that just kind of struck me. And it it feels a little dark in that boxy shelf thing right above the bed right there. It almost feels like 
Um, one additional light would have been kind of handy, but uh, I don't know. I'm weird like that. I don't like dark spots in RVs. Something that's nice on these, though, 60 by 80 true queen bed right from the factory. No sort of shorty McShort pants camp queen or anything like that. And your 2024 series has something that this prototype does not, and that is inverter prep. Like your household outlets beside the bed will be prepped and run to an inverter. Actually, like six or eight outlets through the RV will be inverter prepped, which I think is very cool. And both sides of the bed have those outlets, not to mention both sides of the bed have some awesome breeze across window coverage. Something else that's kind of cool, if we lift this up and look down here, you can see that it does have great underbed easy lift storage with those gas struts, but it also has almost like a little, if you got a small dog or cat, like a little pet den down there. Or you could use it for like a laundry basket or I don't know, what would you put under the bed? Obviously you saw how they had, um, th there's some display things in here, like the way that they had put uh, like a couple little tote baskets under the bed that are not, I don't think included with the RV. Little details like that, uh, you know, I'd be kind of curious, like what would you do with this space? Now, you can see how we're prepped for a TV over here in the uh, corner of the bedroom. Also, right above us, we do have a, uh, a power vent fan, albeit a small fan variety, but the fact is the wiring's already run. So if you want to go uh, on an upgrade with that, I have what I feel is the dollar-for-dollar dollar best solution. And that's a company called Hengs, H-E-N-G-S. And actually, I think that's a basic Hengs fan up there. But the Hengs Vortex series uh, specifically, they provide 90% of the airflow of like a big max air vent fan, but at like 20, 25% of the cost. Dollar for dollar, pound for pound, that is the one that I would personally go with. And I would throw, you could throw three of those in this RV for less than the cost of one true max air. And they're less intrusive. You don't have to mess with seals on the roof or anything like that. It just, to me, it's a little bit of a no-brainer and I'm kind of surprised more people don't talk about it. Now, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I don't do sponsored content. This is just my nerdy opinion. I don't have a problem with anybody that makes some money doing sponsored content, but that's not what this is. Anything you see in this video is just my candid, transparent opinion. And I don't claim to be an authority. I won't claim to get everything right. But in this case, that's where I'm going to spend my money. And whenever I see a second door directly into a bedroom like that, um, one, it might be fire code, but two, I think it's probably there for travel access because that can get us to the bedroom and the bathroom without ever touching the slide. And when I closed the slide, I was a little curious what I was going to get. And I think the answer of how travel accessible this is or is not is really going to depend on your personal stature. Um, I've got a bit of a dad bod, but overall I got skinny chicken legs and no butt. So me squeezing between things is not hard. So if I do a sideways travel trailer two-step, I can go from front to back to front again on this thing without ever so much as touching a slide button. And this is a rack and pinion slide. So if you did feel like nudging it to get to something, you could. Now, uh, the sink is accessible for, uh, you know, right next to the entry door. The refrigerator, you just reach right over and grab whatever you need. That won't be a problem. Overall, I'm not going to give it an A+. Plus, but I'm also not going to give it a C- minus in terms of travel access. I don't think this is terrible. If we talk towing on this one, it's kind of one of those units that's on the cusp and my answer of what my recommended tow vehicle is, it really does kind of vary a little bit. You know, 8,800 pound GVW, in some areas that feels quite half ton towable, but knowing what I know, front kitchens, when you start putting a slide out and especially a monster mother-in-law size chunk of storage in the front of this thing, the hitch weight of these can kind of get a little bit out of control. So uh, you're gonna wanna really watch your hitch weight on one of these. I think generally speaking, like a, a three-quarter ton, like a three-quarter gasser, super comfy all day long. Half ton towability, it's gonna depend on the truck in question and where you're taking it. And I do wish that battery disconnect was not right down by the cargo shift area. Now they, they kind of introduced this front kitchen with a crazy front locker thing last year in their laminated series uh, called the Mini. And um, it's, it's interesting, it's, uh, it's awesome that it's so large. I think that if you maybe took the, the front wheel off some bicycles, you might be able to load them up in there, but it's also a very thin compartment. And I worry sometimes about cargo potentially getting lost in there. So just trying to shoot you straight both directions. Now up front here, power tongue jack, all four corners, individually operated power stabilizer jack. So everything on this is push button easy. And hanging down right in front of those power jacks is the propane cooker hooker, if you feel like doing some grilling and chilling. Now it's a 30 pound propane cooker 
clever, but they are 20 pound propane tanks from the factory, so kind of keep that in mind. They're running these on that um, that BAL series chassis, that huck bolted frame not made by Lippert, um, which is uh, a little bit different from industry standard, rare to find on stick and tins. And they don't have some of the new features in place on this one again. Like uh, right now, you're seeing the conventional old school time tested method of having all those 12 volt relays up front. Well, those are gonna go away. They're basically building their own version of like a Keystone Giggy box to clean up that wiring and improve the overall use and function of the camper. Now, I think the 2024 actual production versions of these are not going to have those outside speakers, which doesn't really offend me. If you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I've really kind of shifted into camp. Let's get rid of those outside speakers uh, personally, because I think that uh, a generic Bluetooth speaker that I have laying around the house in triplicate right now sounds better and doesn't blow away the neighbors with my Freedom Rock, brother. Up top, you got that 200 watt factory solar package and that has a 30 amp charge controller. So if you wanna build up on it a little bit, you can, but if you look at the very front of that panel, I know it's real tiny this far away, there's a little wind fairing on it. And what that's gonna do is, uh, you know, direct headwinds from ripping up on that solar panel. Now, maybe it's happened. I've never, I don't know of a case where a solar panel has just wind ripped off the roof, but it does cause extra stress on those screws, fasteners, and seals in that area. And anything that reduces stress on screws, fasteners, and seals, uh, that's good in my book. They put a serious power awning on this thing too. Look how far it covers both entry doors. And again, the bedroom door doesn't have a window. Well, you got a big bed breeze across window next to it and considering bedrooms are a privacy space i actually think that's my personal preferred way of doing things i think that was some really smart execution right there uh, if you look up top we are prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder and this is one of basically this is built to 23 specs when these go into 2024 production they won't have the voyager backup camera prep they will have uh theory on rear and side view camera prep in case you happen to want a full observation camera suite something else that they're aware that this one lacks that the uh, actual production models are going to need is some kind of holdback for these baggage doors because by default right now it does lack that that feature but that is something that they will include uh, in their actual production series but rear bedrooms the full rear junk in the trunk storage center like that that is not something you find a lot in today's market and I think at this point Winnebago might have maybe the greatest uh, concentration of rear bedrooms that you're going to find in the marketplace like if you look at their total number of floor plans and the total number of rear bedrooms I think they have more uh, on average than about anybody else. Now, down below here, you have uh, what will be a new 350 pound rated uh, cargo uh, receiver hitch on the back. And they are coming up with this little table insert that will actually stick into the side of that to basically act like a, a general side mount utility mount kind of thing, which uh, a little different, but I think kinda cool. I'm excited to see that come out. So let me know what you think of this new one here that we were given access to. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to record one of these without making the stupid access dad joke. Uh, so just buckle up and grab your hat and hold on. Prepare for that. That's going to probably keep happening. Uh, what I will also do and what will also keep happening is I will leave you links in the video description to check for pricing and availability. Now, if that link doesn't return anything, um, then it just means that either we haven't gotten any of these yet or we're sold out and we're waiting to get more. One of those things, because anything that we have on our website, we have right there with pricing on that individual unit. So you don't have to get an idea of a number and then wonder if the person that you uh, talk to on the phone is smokescreening you. You can see the real number before you pick up the phone and we don't do hidden dealer fees we just do everything else like like winterize your rv for you every single year at no charge that's a thing that we do for vicious customers new or used which is kind of cool wonder if you knew that it's part of our diamond club package thing uh when you're ready we're ready until next time take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone